Man, I'm, I am tore up. Uh, I stay tore up a lot. But uh, today I, I've got a word that, that I really believe. And I want you to, I, I know I say this, lean in and listen, but it's important that you do that today. Uh, I, if I had a title for this sermon, uh, I would like to title it, Let It Flow. Everybody say, let it flow. Not let it go, but let it flow. <laughs> yeah, let it flow. Everybody say that, let it flow. Now turn to your neighbor, even if they're looking, like at, they're looking at you or whatever, just say, let it flow. Yeah, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. How many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost in here today? Isn't that good? I mean, I do. I feel the Holy Spirit. You say, Brian, I don't feel him. You may not have him. You may not have him. If you, if you come to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church and not feel Jesus, not feel God, and not feel the Holy Spirit, y'all ready? Here you go. Here's your sign. You don't know him. There's no way you can spend time with him and not know him. So today, here's what I want to do. Let it flow. Everybody say, let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. flow. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. I'm going to hit the road running because I'm excited. I like props too. I like like preaching from props. Y'all can remember those. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. One little verse. But it's so profound. This verse right here changed my life. Changed my life. The Bible says, by his divine power. Listen to this. So good. By his divine power. I'm going to stick right there one more time. By his divine power. Watch. God has given us everything. Everything. Everything we need for living a godly life. Uh Uh-oh. God has given me. God has given you. Watch. Not some things. Everything. Everything that I need, everything that you need to what? To live a godly life. I could stop right there, but I'm not. We have received all of this by watch. How do, how do we receive it, preacher? Here's how you receive it. You receive it, all of this, not some of this, not just Sunday of this, not just on a good day of this. He says you can receive all of this, here it is, by coming to know him. Y'all just missed a praise break right there. Come, no, we ain't gonna go, y'all. Give God praise, come on, y'all. This is a participation stuff, all right? The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. I can hear some of you saying right now, well, Brother Brian, I cannot live this godly life. I cannot do this. I was born on the wrong side of the track. I got the wrong color skin. I'm I'm going somewhere today. I, I, I cannot live this. I'm not strong enough. But that is not what Jesus Christ said, somebody. He said, I have given you, I feel the Holy Ghost, I've given you everything you need, not just to survive, but to thrive in Jesus Christ's name. He's given us everything. Everybody say everything. No, everybody say everything. Come on, everything. He's not slacking anything. He said, all my promises are yes and amen. You have not because you ask not. James chapter 4, verse 3, thank you, Holy Ghost. We have everything. I don't care who your mama and your daddy is. I know who your father is. I don't care if you're independent Baptist, separate Baptist, Catholic. I don't care. I know who God is. He is the God and the author, not of confusion, but the God of all things. Somebody help me in here today. He's good. He's given us everything we need. Notice he didn't say greed. Some of y'all want somebody else's anointing. Some of y'all are wanting to be, hang on to your grandpa and your grandma's coattail. I'm telling you, he said, I've given you everything you need to live a godly life. So you know what that tells me? Here we go. You're ready? Here we go. Here we go. No more excuses. No more excuses. He said, I've given you two things in this life. If you'll listen to me, come on in here. I've given you two things. If you want to live a good life, a godly life, Number one, he says, by his divine power. 
by his divine power. See, some of you think you're bigger than God. Some of you don't think you need God until you're in trouble. Can I preach a little bit good today? Huh? Can, can I tell you? He said, by his divine power, listen to me, we are not anything. We're nothing. We're nothing without Jesus Christ. Elkhorn, we're nothing without him. You can't walk, you can't talk, and you don't realize it until you get down flat up on your back. And then when you're looking up and saying, God, you're all that I got, you're all that I need, you're all that I want, you're all that I desire, God, you're everything to me. Sometimes God will put you flat on your back so all you can do is look up. <laughs> preach it, preach it, I think I will. By his divine power, don't tell me my God's weak. Don't tell me your depression's bigger than God. Man, and he said, number two, by, the, by coming to know him, by my power and by getting to know me, by my power and getting to know me, by my power and getting to know me. Now, I want you to listen to me this morning. People cannot tell you who you are in Jesus. Oh, I couldn't wait to say that. People cannot fulfill you. You can be the richest person in this world and be miserable. We are allowing culture we are allowing religion. We are allowing people to define who we are. But I come to shake up hell today. I come to give hell a message today. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. I am the hand and I am not the tail. I'll bless you going in and I'll bless you. You say, Brian, settle down. I can't. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to. Brian, you, nobody else does that. I'm just, I ain't worried about it. Y'all sit here, I'm going to teach y'all. I don't want to be like somebody else. I want to be who God created me to be. I want to be Brian Keith Rafferty. There's no other fingerprint like me. There's nobody else like it. So listen to me. God has given us everything we need to live a godly life, a godly life. So today, here's what I got. I got a vase in front of you right here. This vase is really, we're gonna, it's a vessel. That vessel in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, we are a temple. We are a vase. We are a vessel of the most high God. Now, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me very much. This vessel represents our temple. It's what holds. Y'all listen to me. It's so great. Because when I think about this, it just messes me up. You know who lives in me? You know who lives in me? No, I will get this in y'all's spirit because, yeah, I, know, I know who lives in you, Brian. It's kind of the Holy Spirit. But we're, but we're living. How come the church is living a defeated life? How come... The church has cowered down to let the government overtake the authority of the church. God set the church up to rule and to reign in the community. We are the salt and we are the light of the Most High God. We are the vessel, I, hallelujah, I am the container that holds the Holy Ghost. He lives in me. That may not mean anything to you guys, but it does me. Because when I'm weak, he is strong. When I am down, he's still standing up. No matter what I'm facing, he's already been through it. That helps me. That helps me. And so up here also, not only do we have a vase, we got some of these orange balls. These orange balls represent things that can get in us, that can get in the vessel. <laughs> and if it starts filling us up, if we're not careful, it'll hinder us. And sadly, we have allowed society, we have allowed religion, racism, unforgiveness, hate, harm, evil, all these things. We're, and listen, mean-spirited, this, that, and the other, and hatred, all the things in Galatians chapter 5. And here it is. It's just, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, that's sin. That everybody's got a sin. 
Everybody under here in my voice is dealing with something. Everybody. It don't have to be an AA class. It don't have to be anything like that. If you will be honest, there's something that is filling you up. It may even be since a childhood. You may have been mistreated. You may have lost children and you got unforgiveness and you got, you say, God, you've done it for everybody else. Why, why not me? And you really, until you got anger inside of you. And next thing you know, if you're not careful, that vase, that temple is filled up with a bunch of orange balls called sin. Orange balls called sin. We have allowed the world, politics, people, church, denomination, everything start filling us up. Start filling us up. So this may look like you this morning. I started thinking about this. I said, man, and y'all, look, y'all can be all sacrilegious and all this good stuff if you want to, but that's been my life before. How many, let's, let's, do, let's have some church. Y'all already have some church. Man, I'm so tired of having politically correct church. Let's just get down to the nitty gritty and say, man, listen, that's, that's what's going on in my life right now. Brian, I've got things in my life that's filled me up that I know is really not me. It's truly not who what I'm thinking. I have become the man. I have become the woman. I have done things in my life, and now all I can see is a bunch of orange balls of sin in my life. See, this may look like you this morning. You're saved. Watch. Y'all lean in. You know Jesus. You're saved. You know Jesus. You're a vessel, but you're full of dead things. You're full of dead things. See, when you look up here, you see orange balls. You see a bunch of orange balls inside a vessel. Because you know what? It says what goes in will come out. My granny was right. So you say, Brother Brian, how in the world can I get that orange balls of sin, hatred, racism, jealousy, envy, all this stinking sin? How many of y'all are, I'm sick of sin. Paul says, I know to do right. Why do I keep doing wrong? Human. Human. We're all going to mess up. But here's what he said. Listen, this is not going to be a deep sermon because here's why I want you to get this. How do we get these out of our life? And he said, one thing, y'all ready? It's by getting, by coming to know Jesus Christ. Everybody say that by coming, come on, by coming to know Jesus Christ. You say, Brian, is that it? Yep, that's it. That, that is it. And here's why. Listen to me. The more we get to know him, the more, listen to me, the more we get to know him, the more we become filled with his presence. We become filled with the living water. Y'all remember in John chapter 4, the woman, the adulteress at the well. Y'all remember her, right? Y'all remember that story. She come to the well during the heat of the day, and Jesus Christ and his disciples into town to get a fish sandwich. Because he didn't want no distractions in his life. He says, where I'm going, I'm going to a well, and I'm going to dig. He didn't get to that well and look at that woman and say, oh, you old sinner, you old nasty. She knew she was a sinner. She knew she was a mess. And we as a Christian don't have to do other people like that. He will show up, he says, uh, can I have a drink? That's the best witness and tool you can have right there, Jim. We have complicated Jesus. All he did is says, hey, can I have a drink? And she said, well, Samaritan's not supposed to talk to Jews. And he says, I, I, I don't care. Can I have a drink? And I love this next part because truth will set you free. He started, started talking, communicating, this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, he asked this woman, he says, what's going on with you? He said, oh, you probably don't want to talk to me. He said, who are you? He says, well, I'm this woman of all this Samaria and this, that, and the other, and I've got five husbands. He says, oh, the truth sets you free. Yes, you do. And not only do you have five husbands, but the one you're with is not your husband. Yeah. And then there's this crazy, Jimmy, a lost person at a well looked at him and said, oh, my God, you must be a prophet. You must be a prophet. You don't know me. You don't know my name, but you know my story. See, God knows our story. God knows what side of the tracks you were born on. 
God knows everything in your life this morning. You can run, but you cannot hide. Ask Adam and Eve, they tried that. God's got your digits this morning. God knows where you live this morning. He knows your address this morning. He knows the amount of hair. Some's got more than others, hallelujah, on your head. He knows everything. He knows everything. So I started thinking about this. Living water. Everybody say living water. He said these words. Everybody say it again, living water. He says, the water that I'm getting ready to give you, you'll never thirst no more. Listen to me. What was he talking about? He wasn't talking about her sins. He says, if you get the right water, <laughs> the living water in your, in your container, in your vase, in your temple, in your tabernacle, you'll never thirst again. Yeah. I'm going somewhere. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So listen to this. Here's what's happened. I got all these orange balls in my life. I've got hatred. I've got jealousy. I've got envy. I've got pride. Every one of us in here today deal with pride. I don't care who you are, where you're at. Everybody in here today deals with pride. Everybody does. And the Bible says, he says, I know you're full of all these orange balls of sin. He says, but what I'm getting ready to pour into you. He took the water. I feel it. Hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. I'm going to spill it if I'm not careful. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because this is my life. This is who I once was. And when y'all say, Brian, you're too loud, or Brian, you get too excited, you know why I do? Because there was a man named Jesus, hallelujah. He started coming into my life. He started pouring a little water here, a little water there. The sin started rising up, rising up. Come on, Holy Ghost, rise up. And then they, like, oh, 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 I brought, oh, 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 here it comes. Here it comes, the sin's coming out, it's purging me. God's purging me. Hold on, hold on, because God just spoke to me. That's, that's some of your life right there. You got a little water on Sunday, hey, but something happens throughout the week. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. See, some of y'all are satisfied with being half filled. I'm preaching it. Better than y'all acting, hey, it's all right this morning. Brian, why you act like that? Because I've got some living water. It's not stagnant. It's not dead. It's not set and steel. He moves. He shakes. Let me go this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what the Bible says. Are y'all okay? Everybody good? Because I, I, listen, everybody good? All right. You know what the Bible says in Revelation 3, right? About being half filled. About being lukewarm. Huh? If I have ever seen a lukewarm generation, I'm calling it out. I'm tired of playing patty cake church. It's either you in or you out. <laughs> either you know him or you don't. Can I preach Kentucky style this morning? Some of you are right here. You're complacent. You're half filled up, and you still got half that sin up in your life. Mm. Some of you, you're lukewarm. The Bible says, Luke will say, Brian, it's none of your business. Oh, that's, see, that's, where, that's where we're wrong. If you are the shepherd, the overseer of a house, I will stand before God one day, not man one day, God one day, on how this house was ordered how this house was just built upon. So yes, it is. Watch this. How many of you know sin will transfer? Yeah, yeah it will. Yes, sure. Just like glory and anointing will transfer. Yeah. You hang around the wrong people? You'll see, guys. I'm we, see, we know this up here. But I'm telling you, there's a lukewarm generation. And today, I come in the authority in the name above all other names. The name of Jesus Christ. No more lukewarmness. Let's get on fire for God. Let's burn for God. Let's act crazy for God. Let's just not just do this. Let's purge ourselves. Come on. 
Here you go. Oh, it's all, it's all, look, 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 look. Your sin will come out. 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 You say, oh, Brian, uh-uh. I'm going to stop right there. That looks like an ice cream cone right there. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, see, a lot of us, I got more water in me than I got orange bones. I know how Kentucky people are. I know how church people are. See, if you got 99% God, you think you're good. I worked hard on this, y'all. You should have seen me last night at my house. I was over by the kitchen sink, adding water, wiping little orange balls down, putting them back in. I said, float! Float in the name of Jesus! Let it flow! Let it flow! I was up See, a lot of you are like that. You say, Brian, I've, I love God. I'm in church today. But what if I told you that's, I know what I hear and I know what you hear. The church has become, become, become comfortable with 99%, 95%. Well, Brian, we're doing this. We're baptizing more people than others. Have we baptized 3,000 in one day yet? Have we baptized 5,000 in one day? What are we bragging about then? When God says you'll do greater things, and you, listen, I believe we will do greater things at Elkhorn Baptist Church, not because of another church, but because of his name. We've got the power, and we're God chasers. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. So um, how, how do you get all the orange balls out of that? Because it's to the brim. See, some of you are satisfied with just being filled to the brim. There's a coffee commercial or something. ADHD. Um, so I told Dana, I said, get me another vessel of water. See, as long as you keep the water coming, as long as you keep it flowing, as long as you keep the water com coming, I don't feel like praising him this morning. You know, that's when you need to praise him. When, when, you're, when you're battling it, I don't feel like praying. That's when you need to pray. When you walk in and your attitude's not right, you know what's wrong? No, you need to start letting the Holy Ghost, just start adding a little bit more water, adding some water. Come on, get up out of there. Hallelujah. Yep, get up out. Yeah, yeah. But that's what, sin, that's what sin tries to do. It tries to hang on. But look, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but there, there's water Standing above the temple. When the water, I'm, <laughs> I work so hard on this. When the water standing above the temple, when you're immersed in water, immersed in the Holy Spirit, when that sin tries to come back, when that sin try, and watch, your sin will try to come back. Come on. That old cussing spirit will try to come back. That old adulterous spirit will try to come back. I'm... But when it comes back, it, it, it can't, it, it tries to stay in, watch. And it, look, it can't go down. Holy water, holy <laughs> Oh, oh, well, Brian, it's back in there. It's back in there. Oh, but no. See, if you stay full of water, living water, not just water, living water. When you stay full of living water, I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name, that sin that tries to come back, it has no room in the vessel. Y'all got me? Somebody say amen. amen. When you are full of living water. Now listen, I understand, listen to me. I understand the times that we're in, how hard it is to stay faithful. I understand. But here's what I do know. That God is in the vessel. And as long as the vessel stays higher, and has more water in it, there's no sin can come in. Hallelujah. And God says his word, I don't want you to be half in and half out. Y'all lean in, listen to me, I'm almost done. I don't want you to be half hot and half cold. 
I don't want you to be half sold out and half committed. I don't want you to be halfway faithful or halfway dedicated. But if you allow me to continue to pour the water, continue to pour the water. I'm dealing with a woman that's dealing with chronic depression. She's been dealing with chronic depression for eight years. Every day of my life, I get about 10 text messages from this lady. Chronic depression. Where her house is blacked out. She don't go out. She don't, it's real. It's real. And she says these words, Brian, what do I do? I love God. I know there's a Jesus. It's going to help somebody. I know he's real, but the devil is tormenting me day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day. He, I hear his voice. He tells me to kill myself. What do you do? Because one wrong word can mess somebody's eternity up. And all I know, and this may be so easy, and may, maybe I am just an easy old preacher or whatever, but all I know, Jesus Christ is enough. God is more than enough. Keep adding the water. When you don't feel like it, say, God, pour on me today. You say, Brian, I don't want to pray. Say it under your breath. And I'm just telling y'all, listen to me. We got to let it flow. We got to let it flow. So I, I, even, I even wrote a song for today. Yeah, I did. I, I'm trying to pray that Greg would just listen to the Lord. and say, I'm supposed to be on the praise team. I'm joking. I'm not. I'm joking. So uh, I, I wrote this, and I, can't, I, can't, I ain't singing for y'all anyway, but it's just fun. So I like to have fun when I preach. I don't want to get up here and say, Thou Father, Thou God. How it be thou with name? Y'all don't talk like that anyhow. If you know somebody talks like that, that's King James days. So I, I wrote a song, Let It Flow. Come on, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Yeah. Let it flow. Listen to this. Let it go. Oh, open the floodgates of heaven and watch it go. That's okay. Y'all are clapping because you feel sorry for me. I don't know what y'all are doing. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it go. Open the floodgates of heaven and watch it go. Get under some heavenly moments. Listen, don't get satisfied with living a half-life with living water. Three-quarters of life filled, filled up to the brim. <laughs> I pray over y'all today, and I re listen, a life of overflow. Y'all know what we need? We need a church that is overflowing. Open spigot. Without somebody, I felt this in my, my spirit, has a garden hose and you, you've crimped it. Take your hands off God's hose and let the water flow. Let the water flow in your life. Let the water flow. Let it flow. Let it go. Open the floodgates of heaven and watch it go. Y'all can get that later. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm so, listen to Psalms 23, verse 5. Praise him, you guys come. Psalm 23, 5. This is what it says. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God says, think about how powerful this is, Jimmy. I prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. So what God spoke to me is, I can even sit down with some enemies and they're going to get more Jesus than I'm going to get world. Because why? I'm in overflow. Why? I've got living water in me. Why? The Holy Ghost lives in me. How, preacher? Because I've got a relationship with him. When you spend time with him, you receive his power. He says these words, you have anointed my head with oil. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. My cup overflows. I'm going to say it again. My cup overflows. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that I serve a God that just don't fill me a little bit up on Sundays. Come on. 
I'm so glad, listen to me, I am so thankful I don't get a little God here and a little God there and a little God on Monday and a little God on Tuesday. And praise God, I come back on Wednesday and boy, I get a lot of God on Wednesday and I go back in the valley on Thursday. I got a God this morning, hallelujah, that a God of overflow. I'm talking about a saucer God. I'm talking about if you will allow the Holy Ghost to flow in your life, pour in your life. And you say, Brian, I've got sin in my life. I done shows you. Are you more full of water? Or are you more full of sin? You've got to purge it out. You've got to purge it out. Make sure, listen to me, make sure that you're in the overflow. I don't care how much the enemy tries to push sin back into your life, he cannot do it. Y'all got me? We, listen, we give, we give Satan way too much credit. We give Satan way too much credit. The Bible says there's gonna be a day when you look over at him in heaven and you're gonna say, that little weasel, that, that little punk, that little skinny, matter of fact, the King James says that little skinny thing. He, Satan is not, listen, Satan don't have horns. Satan don't have a, a red cape and a long red tail. Satan can disguise himself into an angel of light. So be very careful. Be very, very, very careful. So I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you guys this. I think it's so good. You're holding a cup of coffee when someone comes along and bumps into you or shakes your arm, making you spill your coffee everywhere. Why did you spill your coffee? Because someone bumped into me? Wrong answer. You spilled the coffee because there was coffee in your cup. Had there been tea in the cup, you would have spilled tea. I'm preaching, hallelujah. Whatever is inside the cup, whatever is inside the temple, whatever is inside the vase, whatever will spill out. Therefore, when life comes along and shakes you, which it will, whatever is inside you will come out. It's easy to fake it until, you're, until you get rattled. So we have to ask ourselves, you ready? What's in your cup today? What's in your vase today? When life gets tough, when you get bad news, when your family's not doing as good as you think they should, what spills over in your life? Joy, gratefulness, peace, humility, anger, bitterness, harsh words, and reaction. Ready? I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus provides the cup. You choose how to fill it. So, that's the word today. How many of you are glad you come to church today, man? All right. My prayer for all of us, including myself, is that when people look at us, they see living water in us. Hard day at work, living water. Hard day at church, living water. No matter what's going on. You see, listen. They're going to try to come back. I promise you. Sickness is going to try to come at you. When it does, it's going to try to come back. But all it can do is hit you on the surface. Did, did y'all hear me? All it can do, watch, it's so good, is stay on the surface. It can't go deep. It can't penetrate. You say, Brian, boy. Ooh. It's coming, Brian. Life's coming at me. I can't take it no more. Yeah, look. Yeah, let it, let it come. Because I'm so full of Jesus. <laughs> I'm so full of the Word. It can't stay. 
It may hit me one way, but God says, Brian, I've got you. It can't go deep in your life. It can't hurt you, Brian. So stay strong, Brian. It's just on the surface, Brian. So I'm going to ask you, even if you're getting hit, all it can do is stay here. Y'all got me? Okay, you can have one there. Hey, ball, in Jesus Christ's name. There you go. Throw it to see now there, boy. Throw it to see Throw it. Just throw it. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, y'all, 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 we're so religious. Y'all think it's an accident. He just got up here and got a ball. And he didn't hear, oh, I like this ball. He went like this. Nope. If you're not careful, you'll miss the sermon. Some of you are paying more attention to a hallelujah, a something on the surface than you are what's deep down inside of you. I'm telling you, we've got some Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled God inside of us. And whatever's hitting you, what is only on the top, he 